Hey everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use the mask feature and the mask animate feature inside of Premiere Pro. Now, one of the more common uses of this, there's lots of uses that you can use for which you can do a mask, uh, but kind of the main feature, it seems like a lot of people want to know how to like blur out a face and have it follow somebody's face within Premiere. Like if you're doing an interview and you want to cover somebody's identity and ha uh, how you can blur it out, or if you have like a or if you have like a logo or something on a hat or something in the background that you want to blur out, like in a documentary or something, then uh, this this feature will help. So here's an example right here where we might want to uh, blur out the face of this moving person here. In fact, let's get to the beginning of the clip here. Um, actually, actually, we could even do this from in the middle of the clip where we're seeing where we're see clearly seeing the face here. So I'm going to select the clip, and we're going to go to Effect Controls. And under effect controls, almost, and this also works for almost anything that you add as a, as a special effect to your clip. It works on opacity here. Opacity does have a mask mode. Uh, and this is your mask mode right here. You got the ellipse, ellipse mask, the square mask, and uh, a free draw tool as well. But any effects that you add to this, you're pretty much going to be able to do the masking to as well. In fact, let's go to effects. I'm going to type in Gaussian blur. I'm going to grab the Gaussian blur. We're going to add it to a clip here. And I've got that clip added. And now let's give it a little bit of blur. It's going to blur that, repeat edge pixels, and I've got the, uh, the blur applied to the entire clip. Now, under that effect right here, I've added the effect on, uh, on on that clip. And right under the effect here, as I arrow down, you'll see it's got the mask features here, as well as it did under opacity. So any any additional effects that you add, it will have this, this feature. So her face is shaped like an ellipse. So I'm going to click on ellipse mask, and it will create this little round mask here. And uh, right now, it is not uh, the same size of her face. So I can grab this and I can move it which is kind of cool. And then you can also take these nodes here and resize it. So I can just get these nodes down to be, meet the size of the face here. Let's make it about that big so it kind of gets the entire face. A little less of the hair, and there we go. Now these individual nodes, of course, you can move around. It's going to, it's, it's going to retain its ellipse shape as I even pull this out. It keeps kind of that shape going. But what you've got is a couple features on this here. In fact, I'm going to zoom up on this a little bit and show you what these do. Here, from, now you've got this little dot, you got a hard line here in the middle, and then you got this dotted line and a dotted, dotted line. What this is is basically a feathered edge. It's a feathered edge from this dotted line to this dotted line. This is where the mask actually ends, but then it feathers it from this point to this point, from that perforated line to the other perforated line. Now, if you grab this little node out here and you drag that out, notice it increases the feather, and we have a much softer gradient between here and here. So this outer node here is to feather. Now this one is a grow mask uh, feature right here. If you grab this and drag it, it just basically expands your mask. See, it pushes that center line out further, and it's pushing that those dotted line, those perforated lines out with it, and that's a mask expansion there. In fact, as I do that, you can see the mask expansion change down here. And same with the feather. As I grab the feather, you can see. As I drag this in and out, you'll notice that the number sits here and changes. See, what? Well, look at that number over there. As I grab it in and out, you'll see the feather change over here. So you can either change these numerically, or you can grab them, uh, or you can grab them graphically over here on the on your composite window. So I'm going to fit this back in, make it zoom out. All right. So I've got the mask there on her face, but if, of course, if we play through this, you'll notice she's just going to eventually that mask is going to stay right there on the screen at that exact spot, and it's not going to follow her. So what we can do is we've got these little track mask options right here for that specific mask. And you can, by the way, you can add more than one mask to the same image. If I hit square, I can add another mask here and uh, do that somewhere. So you can add several different shapes. If there's two people in the, in the image, you can add multiple shapes. or You can add multiple masks. And notice over here now it says mask two, and that's the second mask. Let's delete that one. Hit delete. And now we are going to track this. Let's track it forward. We're going to start at this point. We're going to track it to the end of the clip, and then we'll do a reverse and track it to the beginning of the clip. So let's press play, play forward, and it will start tracking forward. And then once it's finished, it's added all these keyframes. These are motion path keyframes for that for that mask. If we zoom up to this, you can see these individual keyframes here. They animate that. Every time it clicks, it moves to a different keyframe. It's in a different location. Let's see how well that did, though. I'm going to take it to this very beginning mask here and just work, work, the animation keyframe right here, and we're going to play through it and see how it tracks. And that looks like it did a pretty good job. It keeps that blur on her face, and look how this nicely tracks. It tracks rotation. It will even track scale. It will even track scale as well. If her face got bigger, it would be scaling up. All right, so let's get it to track backwards from that point. So I'm going to get it like right before this, in the empty space before this keyframe here. I'm going to arrow over to the right. This goes to the next keyframe. Jump on that keyframe, and now I'm going to track backwards. You can do it one frame at a time if you want to by clicking on this. So it'll just track one frame at a time. 
and it's adding new keyframes as it's tracking. But I'm going to hit uh, track backwards and it's going to process here. And it's finished. And look what we got now. She's sitting on the couch and is still tracked her the entire time. Let's play through this and see if it works. It has stayed on the face. It's done an amazing job of tracking her face and keeping tr that blur on her face the entire time. So some other things you can do, let's do opacity. I'm going to cut just like a, a hole in the screen here. As you can do it based on a square as well, I'll do this polygon shape and you can grab these edges and take them out and create more of this uh, kind of interesting polygon shape. And then extend out the feather, same way. And then we're left with a nice little feather feathered uh, mass that we've done. Now we're not animating this, but I'm just showing you some different things that you can do with it. Or we can, let's get rid of that, delete that mask, or you can create your own. You can do a, f a free draw Bezier tool here, which means you can click. If you click and then you click again, click again, click again like this. Look how it makes these hard edge, this kind of polygon shape here with the hard edge like that. And now we just cut out that shape right there. Once again, feather, if you want. Uh, but let's delete that. But if you do this, if you grab your Bezier tool and you click and drag, it will make a what's called a Bezier curve. Now, this is not the spline that's creating the mask here. This is the curve. It's creating a curve. And this is what I'm talking about. See how we can kind of follow the, the shape of the face here by clicking and dragging and creating these Bezier curves. And these just control the curve. This is not part of the, of the mask spline. It's just controlling the curve there. But now you can create this little spline and create a mask that's, uh, that's the same shape as the face. We can feather that a little bit, and then we can even track this and see what we get on the track. And I'm not sure what's going to happen because our face probably moves out of the window. So yeah, at some point it moves out of the window, so it loses track. But let's but look at how, actually how good this tracks the face while it's on there. It keeps that shape locked to her face until she actually moves and goes out of frame. So we can even go to the end here arrow to the right, land on that keyframe, and then track backwards, and let's see how far this goes and what we get. And it looks like it, it waits till her face kind of gets in full frame, and then it's able to track her face a little bit more. So it did okay here. But look, it kind of goes off the cheek there uh, instead of staying locked to the face because she's changing perspective so much. But right there, when her face is fairly consistent, it locks in pretty well. You can even go in here and you can delete a range of keyframes if you want to. You can select a range of keyframes and delete it, and you can track it one frame at a time and then readjust your keyframes. So you got you got a lot of power with this. So let's delete that keyframe right there. And now you can move, uh, we, we can move over here and then we can reshape this and watch what happens. I'm going to move over a few keyframes. And I'm going to place my own keyframe here. I'm going to, I'm just going to go over and grab the mask and reshape it. And now notice it added a new keyframe because I'm reshaping the mask here. So it created a new keyframe because it's going to be in a different shape here. And now watch what happens. So we play through it. It'll animate from, it'll animate from this mask shape to that mask shape. So as we play through this, look what happens to the mask and it warps and we created our own keyframe. So you can customize it. You can make your own keyframes. Uh, you can, it usually does a pretty good job of tracking. Usually this is used in more of a subtle manner. Uh, also, if you wanted to like even make somebody's face like more shadowy, more shadowy or change the exposure, uh, we can do that as well. So one last feature here, I'm going to do the same thing on this. I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of the, the blur right here and I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do it with a color grade here. In fact, let's say we want her face to be a little darker for some reason. And we, so I'm going to go into color grading and I'm going to darken the whole image right here. Uh, but now I'm just going to do a mask. Now that Lumetri color panel has been added. I can hit the ellipse. I can shape that to be on her face here. Once I get that shaped on her face, do a little bit of a feather, maybe expand it just a teeny bit. There we go. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to track forward and track backwards and then come back and show you what, what we've got. So let me start tracking forward. And then we'll come back in a minute and show you what we've got. Okay, so I tracked backwards, and now look what we've got here. It just looks like kind of a shadow is over her face. So if I turn this Lumetri color panel on and off, there's off, and then look how bright she is, and then look how dark she is. And we can even feather that a little bit more to make it even more subtle. And now as we play through this clip there, her face has been darkened the entire time. And it locked her face, and it did a really good job. And once again, if we turn this on and off, you can see the kind of before and after there. So those are kind of the basics of doing a mask and doing a mask track within Premiere Pro. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know.